see something here. I have the blanket coming down and underneath his arm right there. And then sort of hang out there like that. Now I'm going to I'm going to sculpt the blanket. I'm not going to uh, uh, dip the cloth. I don't know. Maybe I will. I think what I'm going to do is take some quick uh, photos with my Galaxy camera. reference using my pasta machine I'm gonna roll out the clay so I can get a nice straight line <clears throat> clay is just a little too cool but when it goes to the pasta machine, it has a tendency to uh, bubble up as I put it through. And uh, it's uh, Father's Day tomorrow, but I wouldn't be a father if it hadn't have been for my mother, who was uh, a nurse, a registered nurse. This is taken probably 1940s, uh, when she was uh, had just married my father. She was a beautiful woman. Yeah, my mom's name was uh, Genevieve, and my dad's name was Homer Harold Lemon. He was a farm boy from Camas, Utah. Who joined the Navy in the 19, early 1930s, I think, 1931 or two or one around there. I can't remember exactly when. He retired after 26 years in the Navy in 1956. So I guess if you do the math, you can figure it out. But anyway, uh, they met on a Greyhound bus. Uh, she was from Kansas City and she, he was from uh, Camas, Utah. Which is up in the uh, U, uh, the mountains, up near Park City, Utah, where the film festivals take place now. And I'm going to try to emulate what I saw in the uh, cloth as far as wrinkles go, and I'm going to just roll this clay here. All right, I've got some uh, dark brown clay that I bought a long time ago, and I've got a almost a full box. I think I got four. 40 pounds of it. And I'm going to melt this clay down because I don't use this clay. Um, it's just I prefer the lighter color. Anyway, uh, the reason why is because I am going to put a cloth dipped in clay back here. I was trying to do this and I could just see it was going to take just eat pounds and pounds of clay. So rather than do that, I thought I'd just go ahead and melt some clay and then dip uh, a cloth and let it take up the space instead of clay. I think what I'll do is while I'm waiting I'll uh, go ahead and work on the detail of uh, his hat which is a fur cap and uh, I'm just going to fill in behind. See when I made this face I cut it off the uh, head and worked on the face separate from the uh, head itself. And so I've got a bit of a crack there to fill in. And uh, I'm just basically just uh, mm -hmm. getting the shape of the, uh, <coughs> the hat filled in here for now. 
I want to partially melt uh, some of that clay and so I've put the light real close to the clay and that will bring it to the point of almost uh, well almost uh, melting and then I will show you what I will do from that point some of this clay that's been in there getting really warm and uh, I just start dabbing it just like that and it starts taking on a, a fur texture somewhat let's put it this way it take it looks more like fur now than it did before <laughs> so that's what I just do just dab a little bit on there don't want to build it up anymore and I've already built it up because then it gets too big and it looks like a balloon on its head instead of a fur. Now I want her sort of turning her eyes uh, back towards him subtly. And so I'm going to use a, one of these tools that I got from Sculpt <coughs> Tools.com with a round tip on it and when an eye is looking in a direction and like in this case the uh, eyelids are low and the pupil of the eye has a shape so it it will actually cause the eyelid to be different where the eye pupil is in every respect it will be a very subtle thing but uh, it'll uh, be uh, changing the shape of that eyelid a little bit. And we use this uh, very unique uh, tool from Ken's Tools. It's a uh, the wire is not just a wire, but it's a wire like a spring, uh, except it's a, a wire with wire wrapped around the wire tightly so that uh, you get a nice little texture. It takes down the roughness pretty quick. A lot of uh, movie companies use these tools in their uh, sculpting departments. And tools. You'll see them all the time in photographs or video of them using these kind of tools. Subtle, subtle uh, little things is what makes a sculpture look really interesting. Sorry, I thought I had the camera recording. Um, I just uh, stuffed the empty areas, the things that would be just big holes behind the cloth with aluminum foil, and I want the cloth to hang straight down. I don't want it to be pulled in towards the, uh, the uh, clay. So, um, And I've got my cloth all ready to go. I've got the, uh, the hooks ready to go. I've got uh, a couple of pins in his head that will give, allow me to grab them and, and pin the cloth in place so that uh, the hot clay doesn't cause it to just melt the clay under it and slide down what I've already got there. All right, let's go get this uh, pot and see if I can get this dipped. I don't know where the camera turned off. I don't know if I even had it on. Anyway, I've, I've taken the cloth and I've put it on in case you didn't see it. And... Uh, what I'm going to do now is just let this sit overnight, uh, get really cool, because it's going to take a while. And, uh, and I'll come in tomorrow and start putting wrinkles in and stuff like that. This is just acts more like a, an armature than anything else. So 
We'll see how it works out. I'm not really sure it's going to work out, but uh, I guess I'll find out. Good night, everybody. See you tomorrow.